9 Best Werewolf Transformations That Will Blow Your Mind Werewolf lore claims that the full moon is the best time to transform. Those who are lycanthropes turn into hungry, bloodthirsty beasts ready to hunt. These transformations are often portrayed with violent and vivid detail in horror movies. Over the years, certain werewolf transformations have stood out more than others. Some have left viewers bewildered, and others have won major awards. This video is a compilation of all the greatest live-action werewolf transformations that will blow your mind. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. American Werewolf in London, 1981 This John Landis horror comedy is filled with dark humor and gory thrills. Viewers are in for an enriching experience since it portrays one of the best werewolf transformations of all time. This was accomplished by special effects artist Rick Baker's award-winning makeup effects and costumes. In this film, two American college students are on a walking Britain tour when a werewolf suddenly attacks them. One of them is killed, and the other is terribly wounded. The werewolf dies, but reverts to its human form, so the local townspeople don't even acknowledge its existence. Soon, the surviving student begins seeing his dead friend and having nightmares of hunting on four feet. And that's not all. He even begins having bizarre hallucinations of his victims until he realizes that he is a werewolf. Landis was specific in the vision that he wanted for the werewolves in this film. This was mostly performed with a human being wearing a werewolf head without the intricate details being noticeable. The living room transformation scene shows Naughton's character, David Kessler, in agonizing pain from the beginning ripping off his clothes. He sees an increase in the size of his palms and feet and excessive hair growth throughout his body. His eyes eventually turn bloodshot until they become gleaming yellow when his fangs appear, completing his transformation. Baker's team created several heads and limbs, which they had to swap throughout the sequence. Stretching effect was achieved with a unique material that dissolved over time. For some of the transformation, Naughton's lower body was hidden under the floor with fake legs above. These effects were approached with utmost brilliance, simplicity, inventive techniques, and a crazy amount of hard work. All these worked in perfect unison with Naughton's outstanding performance that sold the pain of his transformation. <laughs> the Howling, 1981 The 80s brought with it another brilliant werewolf movie, The Howling, directed by Joe Dante. This film portrays suggested terror to viewers accompanied by great visuals way before the era of CGI animation. It harbors one of the greatest transformation scenes and revolutionizes the modern werewolf. Plot follows television newswoman Karen White, played by Dee Wallace, being sent to a mountain resort after a serial killer targets her. But she is in for a shock since the resort residents are certainly not what she expected them to be. Although Rick Baker was initially supposed to work on the film's special effects, he was called by John Landis. Therefore, his protege, Rob Botton, who is only 21, was brought in for the film. He was given absolute creative freedom for the werewolf's makeup and special effects. Before this point, most werewolf films used lap dissolves to convey their transformation sequences. This would require the actor to sit for hours without moving as the scenes of the makeup transitions were shot frame by frame. But Botton wanted to create a transformation sequence from man to beast with purely special effects without relying on camera tricks. The film's major transformation scene showcases serial killer Eddie Quist turn into a monstrous werewolf before Karen's eyes. It's a lengthy scene that shows his face 
pulsating and fingers growing at a slow pace, with claws protruding from them. There's a rubbery sound effect as his clothes tear, with his bulging physique and hair growing all over his body. His sharp teeth eventually appear as his eyes turn into a gleaming yellow, and ears begin popping out of his head. Finally, there's a change in his face, which transitions from man to hound, making the transformation complete. The eerie background score makes this sequence extremely frightening. Peter Curran handled the animation sequences for the entire film, contributing to it being one of the most memorable werewolf horror films despite its low budget. Hemlock Grove, TV series, 2013. This TV series, created by Brian McGreevy, provides a refreshingly original approach to werewolves. It incorporates European myths, legends, and even a bit of sci-fi to inject some fresh blood into the werewolf genre. The production value is worth mentioning, consisting of realistic-looking makeup effects and CGI animation. The story is about a small town called Hemlock Grove in Pennsylvania where dark, evil spirits hide in plain sight, and harboring secrets are a daily affair. When it comes to viewers losing their minds, the second episode showing Peter Romancek's transformation takes the cake. The sound from this is so explicitly heard, it sounds like one can hear each bone crack. The skin on his back begins ripping, allowing his werewolf physique to protrude, and his sharp claws appear from his knuckles. Finally, his teeth start falling for his extra-sharp werewolf fangs to replace them, and he has to tear off the flesh of his face so that the hound in him can unleash. In the end, he is also seen eating the flesh of his old human body. It is done with harrowingly fantastic special effects and immense gore that leaves viewers baffled in the end. The Company of Wolves 1984. This gothic horror fantasy, directed by Neil Jordan, adopts a weird fairy tale like approach in creating a surreal collection of stories that portray a bunch of testosterone driven werewolves. It's a Freudian take on the story of Little Red Riding Hood, where the werewolves have more on their minds than merely killing. It is an adult stylized version of the story, set in a dreamlike atmosphere, presents a spectacular approach to the beginning of puberty and losing one's innocence through wild erotic dreams. It evokes a mix of sexual symbolism, poetic beauty, and gory horror moments that are utterly fascinating and keep viewers engrossed throughout the film. A teenage girl in a country manor falls asleep while reading a magazine. She has a disturbing dream where her boring sister is dead, and she lives with both her parents. She spends lots of time with her grandmother, who tells her stories of werewolves. One day, on her way to visit her granny, she encounters a handsome man and bets him about who can reach the house first. Soon, she learns the secret of the handsome stranger. In one of the stories, Stephen Ray, playing the young groom, returns after abandoning his wife. He literally rips off his skin during his transformation, exposing his muscle and flesh before the werewolf protrudes from his mouth, shedding his skin. <laughs> This transformation technique and special effects weave in werewolf mythology and also solve the movie's budgetary constraints. The Howling Three 1987. This misunderstood, quirky film is the third entry in the Howling series that narrates the tale of lycanthropic maladjustment, 
Although viewers wouldn't include this low-budget 80s flick on their list of best werewolf movies, it presents one of the most fascinating transformation sequences. The plot contains an odd werewolf birthing scene, a hunter's posse trying to eradicate the creatures with heavy artillery, and a Russian werewolf ballerina. As a strange race of human-like marsupials suddenly appears in Australia, a sociologist who studies them falls in love with one of the species' females. Mora handles the species differently than any other film of this type. One of the transformation sequences shows Olga Gorky strapped to a chair in a laboratory after a group of scientists witness her transforming into a werewolf. Here they take her photograph as she moans in discomfort. She eventually starts growling as the power fails and turns violent. Ultimately, the camera shows her grayish, wrinkled, furry skin as she transforms into a werewolf and gets free from the straps. The Howling Three showcases the marsupial werewolf's concept, which is a separate species on their own. Just like other marsupial creatures, the females have a pouch to protect and nurse their young ones. This movie also dismisses other traditional notions of werewolf lore, like the full moon significance and the creature's ability to transform whenever they choose. Late Phases, 2014 Adrian Garcia Bogliano crafts a werewolf shocker that reads more like a revenge tale than a horror movie in late phases. It includes all traditional werewolf elements, like silver bullets and full moons, but at its core focuses on a tired Vietnam War veteran who was blinded in combat. Nick Demichi plays a war veteran, Ambrose McKinley who moves into a quaint retirement community in Crescent Bay. The residents don't welcome his aggressive behavior initially. He soon learns that Crescent Bay has been the location for several grisly murders that the cops deem as animal attacks. After experiencing one of them himself, Ambrose is sure that these are more than just regular animals. This movie's werewolf transformation scene shows a man with his chest tearing open to expose the werewolf torso, while extremely sharp claws appear from his fingers. Like every other transformation, the man seems to be experiencing agonizing pain, while the skin on his legs rip apart and his hairy werewolf hind legs appear. Finally, he tears the skin off his face and has bloodshot eyes. Besides hardcore violence, this movie also has a touching father-son relationship redemption tone. Overall, it is a masterpiece of the werewolf genre because, along with its scares, it delivers an emotional and heartfelt story. Bad Moon 1996. Bad Moon is adapted from Wayne Smith's novel Thor. It is a small, sure-handed tale directed by Eric Redd, with a cast completely on the movie's wavelength. The overall mood and atmosphere of the film is dark, with an extraordinary werewolf. A man struggles with hiding a curse within him, and he has one last attempt to free himself with the love of his family. When it looks like he's fighting a losing battle and endangering everyone around him, Thor, the family dog, is his last hope for their survival and the end to his werewolf curse. Designed by creative special effects artist Steve Johnson, the movie's werewolf transformation was relatively smooth, with bones crackling and Ted's sharp fangs appearing first. Then his body naturally morphs into the hairy creature while his sharp claws appear. His face bulges and forms a disfigured, furry, gigantic creature with fierce eyes. Johnson was able to create the werewolf in this movie using an actor in a suit. This allowed for better mobility of the beast. Its overall design is top-notch. The mouth of the werewolf opening extremely wide is a stark example of that. Ginger Snaps 2000 
This film, directed by John Fawcett, uses the obvious parallel from the werewolf lore of a rebellion against normalcy. It's one of the few narratives in horror fiction to use lycanthropy as a metaphor for the cyclical nature of menstruation. It showcases a fresh outlook on teenagers, sibling relationships, and puberty. A 16-year-old edgy tough girl named Ginger likes taking photographs of staged death scenes with her sister. Both the sisters have made a pact that they will die together. The night she gets her first period, Ginger is also bitten by a werewolf. Within a few days, she notices changes in her body and temperament. Her sister Bridget tries to find a cure with the help of Sam, a local stoner. As Halloween and another full moon approaches, Ginger loses control and the local dogs aren't the only ones that begin dying. This film's transformation scene is done with a combination of dim and bright lighting to not overwhelm viewers with its vivid graphic imagery. Blood is flowing out of Ginger Fitzgerald's mouth as she undergoes her transition. Her clothes tear, her large werewolf physique forms, and her face begins to morph while her fangs and claws protrude. <laughs> The werewolf effects in this movie are excellent, with impressive anatomical instincts being parallel to the transformation. For instance, the way Ginger feels when she kills is equated to an orgasm. All of these are brought out by Ginger's character and werewolf transformation. Thriller Michael Jackson's song, 1982. Michael Jackson's mega international hit song, Thriller, was directed by John Landis, who conjured spectacular choreography and marvelous scenes that are eye-popping, spooky, and an amusing spectacle to watch. It contains a fantastic plot, great special effects, and, like the title suggests, a whole lot of thrill. While Michael and his date are watching a movie, they suddenly decide to leave. On their way, they take a shortcut through a graveyard on their way home. Soon, Michael turns into a werecat on the full moon night and is joined by many zombies, who start to dance to the song Thriller. This transformation is quite terrifying in the dark atmosphere. His eyes suddenly change color and become large and yellow, with all his fangs appearing at once. The hair besides his ears grow as he develops his large pointy ears and sharp claws. All this time, he's undergoing tremendous pain as he grows long whiskers and a mane. His roar is horrifying and sends his date running. <laughs> Earlier, Baker wanted Michael to be a werewolf, but later, Michael told him that it would suit his personality more if he turned into a feline creature. And that's where changes were made. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.